three, two, one. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Inside Love Podcast. I'm your host, Ronnie from Jersey. And as always, we are presented by Golf is the Knee. With me is the, uh, the boy Wonder, uh-huh. my right hand man. Back on Jeremy, the, train. the producer. Back on the train. Ah, he's all aboard. He's back on the train. We're going to get into that in a second. Oh, my God. If any of you have joined us the past couple weeks, you know that uh, one person here on set of Inside the Leather had an issue with Bryson DeChambeau. Now that person has changed his tune, and it wasn't me. But uh, listen, folks, if you're enjoying this episode, if you, if, you, if, you're, if you like the content we're bringing to you, if you're laughing on Thursday mornings because of anything that I happen to say or anything that I yell or scream about, or Jeremy, the producer, do us a favor. Come on, like the episode for us. You know, what do you say? Sub- make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And, uh, you know, hop on our train, the inside the leather train, because we're keeping <laughs> we're keeping people accountable. Yeah. My man Jeremy the producer, those of you who may not have caught the last couple episodes, he's been a little upset and furious with Bryson DeChambeau. You know, not for nothing, he was all you know, he was all he was he was skeptical beyond belief when everybody was on the train, right? Everybody was talking about how good he is. He's coming in first, second, third. I think we we figured he won one tournament, he came in second a couple and he was in the top 5 in a couple and and uh, everyone's talking about how far he's driving. He was getting a lot of attention. You know, he's got a very love-hate relationship with the fans. You're either a fan of his or you hate him. There's no middle ground. But what he's doing is 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 completely insane. And last week, Jeremy felt like everybody should be off the train. He's done with him. Two you weeks know? ago. Two weeks ago. To the point where I think that might have been the, the, the name of the episode. Yeah, get off the train. <laughs> get off the train. Um I, I, I kind of disagree with it. I kind of like his. I, I kind of like what he's doing. I, I'm, I'm actually a fan of his. I, I, I got to say. Uh, and what he did this weekend was nothing short of spectacular. I mean, it was it was insane. He, he you know, I, I hate to say it, but he, he mind fucked that course and that field. Oh, he I came mean, in. He came into the week and he said, uh. I'm just gonna hit the ball the furthest, and I'm gonna score off that, and I'm gonna hit it he over. He had, hit it over. he had a detailed plan. That he he knew exactly what he was doing on every hole. He well executed it. He executed it to a T. And you know, you got to you, you look whether you like him or you hate him. You got to give you tip your hat to the kid, okay? Uh, the way he went around that course was nothing short of just absolutely amazing. I mean, he he executed his plan. He had a plan. And, you know, just wow. I mean, the course was insane. The course was wow. The course was wow. There's no doubt about it. I mean, it was... It got real firm Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were hoping that I think it was a little firmer on Thursday and Friday. They they said it was like a little softer than they had anticipated. I heard somebody talking today, the, the grounds crew from Wingfoot, and he was talking about saying he actually said that the smoke from the West Coast yeah. actually played a part in the way the course was playing in New York. Well, it's you know, it's colder here now because of the because of the fires and in the West, it's it's is bris- it? yeah it's bris- that's what so I heard oh, because we're on the jet stream so all it comes down from the you know the West and shoots across the country, and I guess some of that uh, some of the smoke filled air so something uh, something with the fires in California affected the way the Wigfoot played this week, and it wasn't as firm on Thursday and Friday as I think that they wanted it to be, but it got real firm and and and, and uh, fast and firm. On the weekend, and they were happy with it, and and I just thought it looked fantastic. Yeah. One thing that I didn't like was that it was competing with Sunday football. Uh, that was that was difficult because usually the majors are done by now, right? right? So that was tough. It was tough. But it was it was interesting, man. You know, you had a couple collapses. You know, my man Patrick Reed, I love him. He collapsed. He he came out firing on Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Was sitting in the catbird seat, and I'm thinking this guy's, you know, nerves of steel. This guy's right. got ice water in his veins, and and I don't, I, I didn't think he was going to relinquish it. But boy, I think was his 77. I think he shot on Friday, something like on that. Saturday, something high. Yeah. Oh my God, you can't have that in a major. 
But this was, like we said, the, the woods, the, the rough was rough. Like last week's episode, we talked about the rough, and, and it sure as hell was. It, it hurt a lot of people. And even Wolf, I mean, Wolf came out guns blazing on Saturday. I mean, he had, he had, a, he had a big lead. He had a three-stroke lead at one point, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it was something big like that. But it ended up that uh, I think he shot 77 yesterday to, to fall back to even. Oh, even man, park I mean, it was a six-stroke win. That putt that 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 putt that Bryson had on thirteen was sick. His 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 uh his expression afterwards, though you could tell and he knew at that moment he had it. Right. Like he just had to make sure that he didn't screw anything up. Right, right, right. And then he said he said that. He said just that at the end. He said that the putt on thirteen was when I was like Is that okay. when he threw his hands up? Yes. Yeah. I believe that's yeah, that was the reaction. And then he said and then the T shot on fourteen. Once he hit the tee shot on 14, he said he was flexing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, he said yeah. he was flexing. He, he said he just he just he, he wanted to pound one. But it, it, it you know, he he had a lead. He had a big enough lead where he literally could have just played nine iron straight through and and, and finished off with the win. Literally. Like he wasn't going to give up six strokes. Like I mean, it was or I don't well, he wasn't six strokes at that point, but still he just he just knew, you know, he knew. Speaking of six strokes, do you see the putt on Friday from Daniel Lee that he had six putt a six jack on a green. No. Six jack. I missed that. How did I miss that? I don't know. It was all over the internet, I bet. All over the A six jack. Wow. I had a packed weekend looking at houses. Bro. I had a... Oh Let God, me read this so to you. stuff going on. First putt, four inches. Second putt, five uh, five Wait, inches. What do, you, what do you mean four inches? I'm sorry. First putt, four feet. Second putt, five feet, seven inches. Third putt, five feet, ten inches. Fourth putt, six feet eleven inches. Fifth putt, three feet nine inches. And his sixth putt, <laughs> his sixth putt, which was the longest putt, seven feet seven inches. Uh, uh, so, oh, so, a quintuple so, bogey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. So wait, so he 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 missed the putt and then it went down a hill or something. Yeah, and then have. he. Went up, didn't go, but came back down. Like right. was it was it one of those types of things? Yeah, I didn't see the actual putt, but oh my god! Yeah, it, it was really bad. Where did he finish? Really I don't know. It had to be something <coughs> really low because that is just that'll hurt. God awful. I mean, I heard you know I'm three putt Ronnie. I mean, could you imagine six putt Johnny? I mean, six oh putt. my god! How about another notable this week? Colin Morikawa didn't make the cut. Defending champion Gary Woodland didn't make the cut. <laughs> yeah, some people had rough. I mean. We did a little fantasy draft, folks, and to update that bet, you know who won. Three of my guys get one cut. Three of his guys didn't even make a cut. So we actually had to figure out how we going to figure this out if your guys don't make the cut. Is there a penalty involved? So you had Rory and and, and uh, let me let me let me Rory let, and DJ let, me, let me pull up let me pull up those stats real quick. So DJ and Rory were the only th- Two of the five p- players on Jeremy, the producer's team, that even made the cut. Oh, wait a second! What? <laughs> he made the cut. Who made the cut? Danny Lee with the six putt with the six six jack. But I guess after that round, he he withdrew. He said, "I'm done." <laughs> after that round, he quit. He quit after that hell. After I'm that hell, he got up and said, "I'm done." I'm done. So wait, so yeah, so you had two players make the cut and three players missed the cut. Right. So we're like, you can't add up the scores that they had with only two rounds because then obviously, you know, it most likely might be lower than whatever. Well, we figured it out. We first before we said, well, let me if we take your players that missed the cut and just eliminate my highest scores, then it would have only been between one stroke. I because I would have then had Finau at plus six and Xander at plus four. And he would have had DJ at plus five and Rory at plus six. So I would have won by one stroke. When I should have won by a lot more than one stroke, being that you had three guys not even make the freaking cut. So then we decided the way we're going to be doing it moving forward on all tournaments that we do this for is if your player misses the cut, the score that he had to miss the cut. So, for example, Phil Mickelson was plus 13 and missed the cut. We're going to add 10 shots to that score. So he had now 23. Uh, Tiger was 10 and gave him a 20. Uh, Woodland was an 8. We gave him an 18. And then we added everything together. Because all five of my guys made the cut. Reed plus 7. Finau plus 6. Berger 13, which I was surprised at. But whatever. It was a tough course. Xander plus 4. And Ron plus 10. So then the final score, the way we recon- reconfigured it up here, was my my teammates were, my, my guys were plus 40. Jeremy's were plus 72. Either way, we knew I won right away. Because he had guys missing the cut. So, um, so yeah, that's 300 bucks to me. Mm-hmm. Marking that down, plus 300 for Rondo. I need that. It's nice. But then we made a secondary bet. 
about the winning score. Now, Jeremy said plus uh, minus three. I said plus three. I kind of took the overs and he took the unders, so to speak. So uh, I really thought that the the, 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 the winning score was going to be a positive number. I really did. Um, Which you were close. You were close. I, was, I mean, everybody in the field had a plus score except, except for one. Except for one. So we would have either broke even or they would have been a lo- winner or loser, obviously. But the next bet... The next person after Bryson was even, so he would have broke even. The bet would have right. Been well, wrong. yeah, but Bryson, Bryson earned it. He uh, minus six in a field that everybody else was plus par, above par. That, that that's insane. Mm-hmm. It's like a just, tiger. Just just shows it. Just shows it. Just shows how good this kid really is. And I and I and I really do like his approach. It's so different, and people don't like him for it. You know, people think he takes too long. He's 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 taking too much. But you know, not for nothing though. If you're if you're playing for millions of dollars and, and and you're a professional athlete, like the whole point of it is to use your tools. I mean, he's got 14 clubs in his bag, but his brain is like another whole club because just the way he thinks things through and he's willing to put the work in and try new things. And and I got a lot of respect for the kid. I really do. I mean, so you know, I, I, what, the guy's like a rocket scientist. He's you know not gonna have like the best personality. Maybe he's a little douchey. I don't know. But I like him. I think he gets a bad rap. I think people are a little, uh, you know, they, he's doing things unconventionally. You know, he's uh, he's changing the way people are thinking about golf, and I really do think he is. You know, the fact that he knows how to manipulate his swing speed, like he really knows that, like, all right, I, I you know, 340 is going to outrun this fairway. I got to tone it down a little bit. Let me hit it 85% spin, like, but he does it like he that this kid works hard. I mean, I'm sorry. He's changing things and, 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 and I'm all for it. You know, it's not that he's just gotten jacked up and he's hitting the ball far. He was in top 10 in fairways. Driving. Irons. Which I said fairways. Wedges. I said you got to hit the fairways this week. Putting. He literally is top 10 in everything. In every category. And that's how you win. I, I, I mean, you, you know, he d- didn't have any holes in his game. He played out of the rough better than anybody. That I mean, that you know, his his bulk. I think, like, right? You talked about that, right? Yeah. The strength. Didn't you pick? You picked I somebody. Picked uh, what, 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 Rom. What? I picked Rom because I just think because of his driving accuracy. But remember, if you remember, three weeks ago. Well, that's that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, at Olympia for the BMW Championship, I said, listen, it's going to be a strong player because strong players come out of the rough better. Yeah, I mean, and you got to be able to get that speed to get through, cut through like a, like 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 a, like a machete. Yeah. You know, you got to cut through some of that high weeds. Yeah. You know, yeah, because look, uh, even JT, who's not he's not the strongest player, but he's not the weakest, and he even had you know a hard time coming out of the rough. I, yeah, I mean, you got to be able to like put some like put Tiger some, didn't put have some it ass in his back. Yeah, Tiger didn't have it in his back. Right. Right. I, I mean, look, it's, that's why I thought Phil was going to be all right because he, you know, his wedge game is so good. So slick yeah, with the well, wedge I mean, did, 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 I didn't catch enough of Thursday or Friday to even know. Thursday, I was locked in all day. Uh, what happened to Phil? Like, how was he? I didn't watch Phil. Phil was at a PMT time, and I uh, unfortunately was on the course that, that afternoon. Uh, unfortunately. So was, yeah, yeah, in the morning, I was uh, locked in. Unfortunately, I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. That's just so great for you. I'm so happy for you. It was only nine holes. It was nothing crazy. No, nothing crazy. Where'd you play? Practice round. Hyatt Hills. Hyatt Hills. Where's that? Clark. Clark, any good? Yeah, it's a really nice nine-hole course. Is that right? Yep. That's not where we played with John, right? We pl- no, we played at Plainfield West Nine. Right. Best okay. greens, but terrible. Other way, all the way everywhere else. But uh, but no, I mean, it, look. No, listen, I'll eat my words. I said two weeks ago, get off the train. You did you because did, he you, wasn't doing you, you what you he wasn't doing what everyone was saying he was going to do or what he was saying that he was going to do. But this week, he not really had a good week. But I said, listen, he I, did it. I, I, I ate my words. So yep. I ate my words. So I'm it. back on the train for a little bit. I'm going to go buy a Kangol hat. Me and Ronnie talked about it. What it's type of hat? It's not a Kangol hat. It's not <laughs> oh, I'm a sorry. Paperboy. Paper boy. It's like, yeah, it's it's hard to explain. Like a Kangol hat that like Samuel L. Jackson wears. Right. It's high in the back and it slopes down like this. And it's, you know, he wears it backwards and it's got the, the yeah. His is a little bit more of a fitted, rounded, rounded, like, you know. What's the explanation I, you gave me? I don't want to say it on oh, here. Oh, okay. Uh, it looks like the tip of a, t- tip of a piece. <laughs> you know, it just, it's, it's just round. It's very weird looking. It's form fitted. You know, it's, it's, uh, it, but, you know, hey, I can't wear it. I mean, good for him. If Nike you know? made one, I'd buy it. Puma makes it, though. Well, I mean, well, Puma only, I mean, I don't even know. Does Puma make them or does he just get them and have the Puma logo put on it? Because I don't know. I'm sure they make them. But anyway, just for, um, just for him. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I look, the kid's got his own style. Like, you know, I kind of I kind of dig it. I, I kind of dig I how, look, how off the wall he is. I was looking at pictures back from probably, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and he's always wear a, 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 the paper boy hat. Oh, he's always he's yeah. always worn it. And since he was a kid. Right. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's uh, who 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 was the pro that wore it back in the day? Was it uh, Payne Stewart? Payne Stewart, I believe, yeah. Well, I uh, listen, if we're dating back to 1920, everyone wore a paper boy hat. <laughs> Everybody was wearing them, yeah. But no, I mean, I look, I like the kid. I like his approach. I love the fact that he worked his ass off during COVID and just bulked up like a beast. And his swing speed is ridiculous. Before, no, it was before COVID. But he used COVID it started to get before bigger. COVID. Yeah, he was. He, but yeah, he he blew up. He blew up a little bit big. It started in the President's COVID. Cup. But no, he did. He, you know, hey, look, hats off to him. I, I like him. I, I dig what he's doing. I don't think it's hurting the game of golf. I think it's helping the game of golf. He's giving people a different way. They they were even talking about. I heard people talking bad about it, his putting with the arm lock. It's like, dude, stop. Like, just stop. The top of the club is what needs to be not anchored. And it's not his forearm. It only goes. It goes. It's below his elbow. Yeah, but he's th- the reason why his club's not the top of the club is not anchored is because it's an offset putter. So it's so his putter is one degree at the bottom, two degrees in the middle, three degrees at the middle top, and then four degrees at the top. So it's like sloped back. That's why it's not so locked forward. Yeah, but he's but his arm is locked. His arm lock is is the way he puts, and people are saying because he's no, but he's top locking his, that arm. Right, he's but his club head putt. is not pushed forward all the way. No, no, there's no forward lean. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay. I'm talking. Yeah, no, I'm talking about like the way you know you, you had the belly putters that were people were anchoring them to their belly so they wouldn't. Oh, move. you're saying it's not a top. Yeah, okay. And gotcha. it's so so they, they said okay, fine, you can't do that. You gotta you gotta move it away. So now these people are moving it away with the the Bernard Langard kind yeah, of Adam body. Scott and uh, even Adam Scott. You're right. So so now, but the, the arm lock. A lot of players are doing the arm lock. A lot of people on on tour are doing that arm lock thing, and um, they were just it's it just funny like just the, the haters are just going to hate they're going to nitpick everything he does you know they're going to say he's on juice which i mean you know who who knows i don't think so but uh, but, i mean really whatever have you looked at him lately he's huge but he's he's the first one he's wearing some tight ass clothing i don't know he's huge he's He's but i don't think he's huge i saw a picture from last year to this year yeah all right all right how about this i'm gonna do the same thing he does and we'll see how big i get but you don't have the frame that he has. He had a linebacker frame. No, he right? didn't. No, he did not. He was skinny. He was very skinny. Blow up a picture. He was frame. Frame. Wide shoulders. No, he was He skinny. was a big guy. He was a skinnier dude. Skinnier than he is now, yes. But if you had a picture of you standing next to him six years ago and a picture of you standing next to him now, that would be a comparison that you could make. So I'm going to go on the Bryson trains, and I'm going to do everything he does for... Six well, months. Let's good luck. S- let's give it six months, and we'll see how I do. Good luck. I don't think you have enough time to work out the way he does because you have a life and things going no, on, work. and you're not a professional golfer. I won't work There's from now until then. The bank. But, yeah, I mean, look. I don't know. I dig it. I won the bet. You won the $100 side act- uh, secondary bet, mm-hmm. so I'm plus 200 overall. Right. So I'm going to use that. Look at this. Yeah, he put on about forty pounds. Try sixty. No, oh, sixty. He's probably like one eighty. Sixty pound looks like. Nope. No. He showed me a picture of the two side by side. Yes, it, and he's obviously bigger. We knew that. Okay, but who cares? Doesn't matter. You still got to hit the ball. He's yeah, just still... like baseball. Can't take zeros. Who cares? Doesn't matter. <sighs> yeah. No. Yeah, yep. 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 He, you know, he's only only third player in history to win the U.S. Amateur. Mm-hmm. The NCAA individual in US and the Open. U.S. Open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bryson, Tiger, and Jack. Right, 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 right. I mean, if you're going to be in th- with, with, with teamed up with two people in a, in, a, in, a, in a stat, that's the one that you want. Holy shit. You know who's kicking themselves right that. now? Who's that? The idiot that put $45,000 on Phil Mickelson to win the U.S. Open. If you have $45,000 to put on Phil Mickelson to win the U.S. Open when he's 80 to 1. You you don't need that forty five thousand. That forty five thousand means nothing to you. That's like me putting five dollar bet on something. <laughs> he could have bought a car or yeah, but that but you're not thinking about that course. because a guy who's betting forty five thousand dollars on it on anything has money. Is not buying a car for forty five thousand. His cars are one hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand. You know what I mean? He's not true. driving a fucking you know a Prius 
Prius. for forty five thousand dollars. Priuses are like twenty thousand dollars. Doesn't matter. He's not buying two Priuses. He's buying a, a, a <laughs> Ferrari and or a True. Porsche. True. You're right. You're right. Who's you know? who's making that? Who's be- who's booking that deal? Like, who's Who paying them out? Fanduel, DraftKings, no. Well, uh, any of them. Uh, it's a bookie service. That's what they do. A bookie's not paying them out. Uh, one, whatever the payout was. Of course they are. They're not taking the bet then. What are you talking about? Right, they won't take the bet, but a regular bookie's not paying. What do you mean out. a regular, like a regular illegal, like you know, yeah. Pete around the corner, Pete yeah. the bookie? Yeah. No, Pete the bookie's not usually probably taking future bets like that. Right. But if Pete the bookie was smart, he would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he'd go lay off half of it in Vegas and try to and just pray, you know. But that's the whole point: is that you want to try to make both sides of the bet equal. But you know, I mean, that's just. How many people like that? Literally, just think about it, though. Every single dollar you took on that U.S. Open that wasn't on Bryson, you're keeping. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Every dollar. You're only so if Phil Mickelson was the one to win, you're paying out a few people a lot of money. But everybody else you're collect. I mean, I don't know. It, it evens out. I mean, I'm not really. I don't think it's when a long shot like that wins. Yeah, it hurts the books. For sure. Oh, it leaves a dent. Big dent. How many people bet $20 on Phil, $100 on Yeah, Phil? no, no. No, no I just, know. You might as well piss on the money. To rip it up, put it on the floor, and piss so, on it. So as a bookie, you're, ta- you're taking the chances yourself. Correct. Yeah. You're trying not to, though. Like, as the bookie, you know, you, you if you tell me you got $1,000 on the, 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 you know, the what's the Monday night game tonight? What do you got? The Raiders? Saints, Raiders. Right, which obviously you're going to already know the outcome to this. But let's just say you come in and you bet $1,000 on the Saints. Right. And I'm like, oh, shit. If this kid, like, if I'm like a little college kid bookie, like $10 bets, $20 bets, someone comes in and says, I want $1,000 on the Saints. I'm like, oh, shit. What am I doing? Well, if you're a bookie, you better have a bookie. <laughs> right. Right. So that you could call up and say, oh, my God, I only have 200. I can, I can only cover 200. So, all right, fine. You call your bookie. You bet 800 on the Saints with your bookie. All right. So then if the Saints win, you collect 800 from him, the 200 you have, and you give it to the guy. Yeah. And if you lose, vice versa, and it pay, you pay him to pay him. So, I, I mean, you, you covering yourself. Some bookie will kick you out of their book, though, if you're making too much money. Some, bo- Some bookies will kick you out I of their book. I mean, well, know. that's not a very good bookie. I thought it happened Why are we talking about bookies? I don't know. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck are we talking about? What is going on? It's know, like, a, it's, like a, it's a slow Monday morning after an exciting U.S. Open. Um, oh. What else we got going on here? A giveaway. Oh, that's right. We got, we're going to extend the giveaway. We're going to extend the giveaway. We had, a, we had some comments. I was a little underwhelmed, I got to say. I'm not going to lie. If you're listening to this and you posted something that was supposed to make me laugh, do me a favor. Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. I mean, come on. Make fun of my voice. Something. Uh, this, office, this episode sponsored by Doug. Someone did talk about that. Busted my balls about the McDonald's, McDonald's. breakfast being legit. I mean, God, it's legit. Those pancakes are good. I don't eat them. I eat, eat the sausage and McMuffin personally, <laughs> but they're good. The biscuit. <sighs> if I have a day where I'm not going to eat lunch, <laughs> then I'll go for the biscuit, eggs, uh, sausage, egg, and cheese on a biscuit. It's, uh, it, it'll fill you up for a day. When are you now. never eating lunch, though? I don't think Very. you. I don't think you skipped lunch a day in your life. No, I no no. See, that's not true. Um, <laughs> sure? I actually skip lunch quite a bit because I'm not a morning person. So I'm I'm not a big breakfast guy. So for me, a nice breakfast is just a protein shake. Mm. Like that's you know put a little peanut butter in there, some fruit, the whole nine, right? Mix it up nice and have a shake. That's what I want. I like eating light in the morning, and then having a, a then by by noon I'm I'm ready for lunch, and then by seven I'm ready for dinner. All right. Okay. On the days that I'm a little bit late getting out of the house, say like 10 o'clock and I'm stopping for that coffee or and or that breakfast sandwich, I don't eat lunch that day. I'm not eating a breakfast sandwich at 10 o'clock in the morning, 1030 in the morning and then having lunch at one. No, I'm going to no. wait and just have an earlier dinner. OK, See what I'm saying. No, I never skip a meal. Yeah, well, that's good for you. Three squares. Can't skip a meal. Uh, what the hell's going on? What else do we have going on here at Golficity? We have anything else going on on here? We got any videos coming out soon? I mean, geez. What we oh, I. By the way, I reached out to a couple people. Might have uh, might have a spot for us to uh, take care of those those clubs. Okay. Yeah, I talked to a couple managers at a couple places, and I got a, a rep. Okay. Got a rep uh, lined up. We're just gonna try to figure out what day we can do it. I uh well, if we're talking about upcoming weeks, we have a big 
we we want to do this for a while. We have a superintendent coming on. That's I, right. I don't know if you want to disclose what course or the name yet. No, not yet. We'll wait till he comes on. But we do have that. We have that lined up uh, within the next couple of weeks. It could be That's next great. Week. That's great. Let, let's try to make it next week so that the U.S. Open is still fresh in people's yeah. minds so we can hit them, with, hit them with some questions about how do you get the course to perform and, and, and get it in a shape like that. If you ever wanted to grow the rough out, <laughs> you would get, some, would you get some heat for that. You think we get crazy heat if you ever like grew the U.S. Open style rough out? At a, a, I guess he's at not the course where he's at. No, maybe not because no, you're going to no, keep place to no, play. No. No, well, I mean, he yeah, wouldn't I get mean, heat for it, or he wouldn't do it. I don't think he'd get heat for it. I think so. I mean, you know, when you're at a when you're at a public track, your goal is to speed up the speed up play. Yeah. Yeah, so it would, it would fuck know, the pace of play up. I, but I, but but you know, on the flip side, it would be nice to be able to grow them out, saying like, "Hey, look, come come September, we're gonna we're growing this out." Right. You know, we want to make it a little bit more difficult for the diehards. And I love this time of year. I mean, oh, oh my God, God, is it the best? You said you cracked your hand though. You already got to like you split open. your finger open because it was so cold when he was when we were you hitting balls at the, the range, range. Yeah, I must have hit like a hundred balls and I just wow. I haven't been to the range. Oh, I, I played yesterday too. Oh. Yesterday Sunday, yeah, I played. That's when I did it. <laughs> playing tomorrow. You know. So playing playing this time. Well, we'll get back to that. I want to talk about. I'm going to go back to the to the U.S. Open, and it sucked being on Super Bowl on Sunday football. Super Bowl, on, Sunday. On Super Bowl Sunday. It sucked being on Sunday, uh, competing with the NFL. You know what I'm scared of, by the way, since we're on this now, the Masters. The same thing's going to happen with the Masters. On that Sunday, you're watching the Masters, or are you watching football? Maybe maybe you are watching the Masters. I'm why it's the, it's the Masters. Um, you know, I do think that the leaderboard is can determine a lot. is going to determine a lot. Yeah. I think because of so much Bryson hate that's out there, people either just don't like his style, don't like him, whatever. You know, if you're a Brooksy fan, you don't really like Bryson. This was also, you know but that. this was also done by hole number eleven, where he was six under and no, he was yeah, he was he was running away with it. Um, I, I think, look, a lot of people were like like me. I think a lot of people, you have your diehards, but again, like you said, the, the leader, the top of the leaderboard wasn't star studded. You know, there was it was it was really a two man show. Um, and Wolf, once he st- once the wheels fell off of his wagon, it's it stopped having like that, you know, tension um, with that course. If you had Tiger. Phil, Rory, Jim DJ, Jim you know, you had like the power names, the Roms. Uh, well, maybe not so much Rom, but like you had like a Patrick Reed, Justin Thomas, Brooks Kepka, three way like, you know, bananas. They're going at it and a, and, and a new person's taking over every other shot. Then you're locked in with that course because anything bad could happen. Someone could throw a double, triple bogey up like it's nothing. Right. I think because it was Bryson, knocked it down the ratings. I think because it was Wolf that was contending with him. I don't think Wolf is, you know, he's got the awkward swing. I mean, can Taylor Made push a guy anymore? All the guys that Taylor Made represents, every commercial, it seems like Wolf is taking like the main seat. Yeah. Where yeah. he he's the one teeing off in that one commercial for the TP5, yeah. and Dustin Johnson's just walking up and giving him a fist pound. Right. It was a cool commercial because it was like as it was growing and yeah, yeah, our balls get more popular. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't like it. The spin numbers were terrible for me personally, but it was it was a good commercial. But I'm like, why is Wolf taking the last shot? And not Tiger. Oh, it's TP5? The TP5. Oh, that, yeah, TP5. Yeah, yeah. Tiger. Tiger's uh, Brook, Brookstone. Yeah, no, I thought you meant Taylor made in general, but no, T- I saw a TP5 commercial. Ricky's there. Well, that I'm just talking about that yeah. TP5 commercial, right? But you have Rory. You got Tiger for Taylor made. You got Dustin Johnson. You got Wolf. Jason Day's there, I believe. No, yes, yes, Jason Day. Right, I keep. It's funny when they go to Nike on the shirt, I kind of forget what clubs they're, they're oh, playing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm the opposite. They go to Nike, I know exactly the whole bag, plus their ball, plus their putter. No, what is, uh, okay. So anyway, so yeah, so I, I'm, I'm just, what? I'm what? just what? shocked. What? Wolf. What is Wolf? What do you mean? What is Wolf? No, nothing. Wolf is Nike. What Taylor made? I know. So how would you not? You just said. When they go to Nike. Oh, but he has, where's the Taylor Mead hat? Oh. 
Yeah, he wears a Tellerine hat. It must he, be. It must mean his contract. He has to wear the Tellerine hat. Oh, so wait, I thought you could only wear the swoosh. That's not what I said. What did you say? I said if you're wearing the swoosh, you have no other branded companies on your shirt or your pants or your hat. But he has Taylor Made on his hat. His I mean, hat. he's not wearing a Nike hat. He's wearing an Adidas hat. No, he's wearing a Taylor Made hat, which is owned by Adidas. Who says who? Excuse me. Says who? Taylor Made Apparel is owned by Adidas. Their hats owned by Adidas. Taylor Made Apparel is made by Adidas. D- they only make hats. Adidas. <laughs> what, what, what are we talking about here? We're not. What are you saying? Taylor Made as a partnership with so Adidas. Either, makes, either Taylor Made owns Adidas hats? or Adidas made. A who makes Titleist hats then? Footjoy. Because Footjoy is the apparel company for Titleist. You're saying Adidas is the apparel company for Taylor Made. Yes. So if you play Taylor Made, you have to wear Adidas. You don't have to, obviously, because look at D- Jason Day. But Jason Day used to wear Adidas. Dustin Johnson wears Adidas. They all wear Adidas when they're with Taylor Made. Xander Shoffley wears Adidas, and what is he? Callaway. Uh, right, Callaway has their own apparel and no other apparel company, I believe. Callaway has their own apparel, is that what you're saying? Yeah. This is getting stale. But no, so what the hell were we even talking about? I'm trying to find how, out. How did we get I was talking I was trying to talk about how the wolf shit the bed and it hurt the ratings and we were, and we went down this rabbit hole of clothing. But yes, Adidas either owns TaylorMade or TaylorMade owns Adidas or they they broke up their partnership. They were a partner together recently and now they're they broke away from each other. I, I I don't know, but there's there's a connection between the two that I don't know what the current status of it is, but at some point in time TaylorMade was either bought by Adidas or they partnered with Adidas and they just whatever. It is what it is. Um but I think the Masters I think is going to be a little bit different cuz it's the Masters. I found it very, you know, it was a pain in the ass because I was watching the Jets get beat down yet again, which hurt me. So the, the, so the Jets were getting beat up. So about halfway through that game, I was switching over to the to the golf, right? I'm going back and forth between the commercials and the Jets game because after the Jets game's over is when I usually go to the red zone, watch the red zone channel. Because the Jet game was over so quickly, and I was so frustrated because it's unwatchable, the New York Jets. I switched over to the red zone. And the red zone's kind of hard to watch because there's no commercials. So at what point are you breaking away to watch the golf? I was doing it because I enjoy watching golf on TV, and I kind of was rooting for Bryson. Um, and But I think it hurt the ratings. I think come Masters, it holds a little bit more weight. Um, I think everyone's going to be intrigued to see what the Masters looks like, but it all comes down to the final pairings. If, if you got some five or six named guys coming down the stretch in a contestant Masters, I think the NFL will see a drop in ratings that day because you're going to, which they're, they're seeing a, a big drop in ratings to begin with from the first two weeks. I was actually kind of shocked that, it, that the, the drop was as big as it was. Um, but that being said, the, the – if you got one no name, if you got two no names running away from the field, and it's not really that contestant, you got one person uh, pulling away. It, it's you know everyone's just gonna say, "Hey, congrats, Bryson won the." That's you know that's what a lot of people did. <laughs> hey, he won, and there's still five holes left, and they're back to watching football. Um, but no, I think the Masters will be different. I think people will be watching the Masters because it's the Masters, especially if there is a couple of people in contention. Then I don't think anyone's gonna be watching football. I'm gonna watch the entire Masters on Sunday if that is the case. Um, I'll check in on the Jet game. I'll check in because by that time they're probably going to be so far out of it. The way, yeah. the way that they look. Oh my God, it's hurting me. But so the cold temperatures, it went from straight up summer, hot, sweating hot summer to winter. Just winter. To, like, to it winter. didn't even go to full, it felt like. I mean, I don't know if it's just the way that 85 degrees to 65 feels. 65. Try, try 45. When was it 45? Yesterday morning till 10 o'clock. Yesterday morning. What was I doing yesterday morning? Probably right? sleeping. No, I was walking. I was walking. Oh, my daughter yesterday. Oh, I took my, I took my, so I was up early with my daughter. Oh, today was cold. <sighs> Bro, today is a low of 43 with a high of 64. Yeah, that's, that's not fall. Like, what happened to like 60? Well, that's fall, but that's October. What fall. happened to it's 65? Like yeah, that's like Thanksgiving. That, so, that, that's no, like, again, th- what that, I'm that's saying That's like is Thanksgiving, Halloween fall. Yeah. 
We're still at the middle of September. So I, uh, again, I heard that the fires in the west are cooling it down over here in the in the, in the northeast. But next week is going to ramp up to eighty. This weekend is going to ramp up to eighty. Oh, uh, so this is the this is the shit I don't like. So now I'm like I'm all excited. I got my pants out. I got all my golf pants oh, out I, now. All well, nice, just be ready like me. To just always, always wear pants. All my see, I can't. I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable playing golf with the pants on. I, although the golf pants are very comfortable. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm just I got all the outerwear stuff back out. I'm ready. You know, and I, I kind of didn't lose it. I kind of I kind of like playing with a vest anyway. Yeah. Um, and I don't like playing with short sleeves, but I like the pullover games. Yep. I'm big with the pullovers. Love the pullovers. So my new thing is uh, the golf sweaters. Lightweight sweaters, a little hood. light, little light. With, with a hoodie. Yeah, that doesn't look good for golf, though. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Not if you're like a. a See, you're how old? You're however old you are, and I'm. Yeah, I, look, 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 nobody newer. wears hoodies. I wear a lot of hoodies. I'm a big, and in, in I'm a big short sleeve no, 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 t-shirt hoodie on guy. Co- on the golf course. No, on the golf course, I think they. I yeah, think that's there's. What that's what I'm trying to say. You're there generation is a golfer. line. There is a line where you know. Look, I think shorts should be allowed on tour. But I like the idea of the collared shirt. The collarless shirts, I'm starting to not like the way they look. Mm-hmm. I like playing with them because I like the feel of them or whatever. But the look of them, I think, bothers me. Like, leave a polo shirt. You got to have a golf shirt. Right. got to have a collar on your shirt. You can wear shorts. But the hood's got to go. The, mm-hmm. the hood's dr- the hood is crossing a line. The collarless shirts, the mock turtlenecks, that type of thing to me teeters on the line it's kind of i don't know it's kind of good and then ah, maybe not so much it, it depends on how you do it like the tiger when tiger was wearing the red mocks mock turtlenecks i kind of dug it okay um but when you go to the collarless shirts i feel like it's a little too casual looking now we're on style realm by the way if you go what now we're on the style realm yeah, we're in the, right we're i'm just giving you place. my opinion we're all over the place today all over the place because i got a lot of work stuff stuff going on so i'm trying to break in and and uh, we're trying to bang out an episode here, uh, but no, it, it's it's the, the collarless shirts bother me. I like playing with them. I like them, but I, I looking at pro. I'm just saying, watching pros, watching professionals. All right, I think shorts wouldn't bother me if they had the collar shirt. The collar shirts kind of teeter in. The sweaters are good. The mock turtlenecks. Tiger made it look good. I think that's okay. Still teetering, but when you go with the hoodie, uh, is, is there a collar on this shirt? This hoodie that you speak of? No. It's just, it's just like a, a lightweight sport to, uh, golf hoodie. JT wore it. Van Rooyen wears them. So, so they're illegal? Yeah, they're not illegal. They're like okay to wear? Yeah. It's a new type of golf uniform. Mm. And I don't know if you notice. No, you definitely don't. Notice. Obviously didn't notice. Yeah, you don't. You don't notice. You know why? It's you're teetering. St- you're stuck in your old traditional golf ways. But but I just I just, I just just named five things that I'm not. I just named five different things that I'm out of it. The mock turtlenecks? The mock turtlenecks I'm okay with. I'm okay with the collar shirts and the shorts. It's completely against all the uh, old school golf purist sh- stuff. You're a big cargo pants guy, right? Oh, God. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, the cargo pants. Oh, my God. I mean, maybe if you're Pete the Builder, you want to build a roof somewhere. You know, you're roofing. You need them to hold a hammer. But what, Tommy, why else Tommy would you need the developer. Them? You know, but... um. Let's talk about shoes. Oh, by the way, so I got my shoes redone. I took my shoes to a uh, to like a, I found like a, a boot a boot guy. Mm-hmm. I got a guy that does boots, <laughs> shining boots. You know, at the mall. No, 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 no. Like a full blown shoe repair boot oh. repair place. Like you know, I've taken my wife's like heels. You know, you, you get like the high heels that need to be worked on. You know, and you bring them to the because the, the, the shoes are a lot of money. Right. So you go get them repaired. Right. They're real nice. The guy, you know, and I was like, let me bring him my golf shoes. Because we played in the beginning of the season, we played in an outing, or we played in a tournament, and it monsooned on us, right? Mm-hmm. And I got them so wet, I filled them with newspaper, took the soles out, filled them with newspaper, tried to let them dry outside in the sun, and, and it just, they had a, a disgusting smell to them, and I was just upset with them. And I was, I, I tried cleaning them myself, the smell came out a little bit, it was still, it just, it just, they weren't right, I couldn't wear them. Like New balance, were, right? Couldn't put, no, they were my foot joints, with okay. the boas, the, the ones that I loved, my favorite shoes that I've had, like, probably ever. Mm-hmm. And I was devastated when they got that wet, and I ruined them. So I finally, I was like, I'm looking for new shoes now because the the New Balance ones that I had are terrible. They're terrible. They're, they don't fit my foot right. Let me take that back. They're not terrible. They're a little cloggy. Your foot's terrible. Heavy. My foot, I got a terrible foot. But 
They don't fit. I think they. I think the more I was using them, the looser they were getting, and right. now it got to the point where my foot was swimming inside of these shoes. So I said, I got to do something. So I started looking for new shoes, and two hundred and fifty dollars for the ones that I want. It's a lot of cash. <laughs> to be so buying a pair of shoes in September that I'm only going to wear probably maybe three or four more times. Oh, you don't play golf in the winter? In the winter? Yeah. Where Where do you play golf in the winter? Wherever it's open. I mean, yeah, I guess. But no, I mean, not, yes, but you're it, not dedicated. Let's just say I play seven more rounds. Is it worth buying a new pair of shoes now and then hope that they look good in front of I'd rather buy a fresh pair next year. Well, so you, I, well, you can break them in the sim. You know, you can do that, too. Ooh, <laughs> that's right. You know, won't be walking in them, but you'd be swinging in them, which right. is yeah. That's a good. I didn't think about that. Well, when do you walk on a golf course? To and from the cart. <laughs> okay. Up to the tee box and down to the, from the tee box. <laughs> to the green. To the green and back from the green to the cart. Um, but no, but still, it, it, you, you got to break and choose. I mean, it's when they're stiff as a board. It sucks. But anyway, so the ones that I had, they loosened up so much that my foot was swimming inside of them. I wasn't happy with them. I literally threw them away. So I got rid of them. I actually threw away all my old pairs of shoes because they just needed to be tossed. Um, and I took and I was like, wait a minute. What about the boot guy? I go to the boot guy. I was happy to see that it was open. You know, because, I mean, with the whole COVID thing, I mean, I wasn't sure if his, his store was still there. Um, so I was happy that the store was there. Bought him my shoes, and I was like, I need help. He goes, I got it. I got it. I ripped it, took the soles out, threw them away, put in put fresh, fresh new padded, real nice. He goes, and these are going to even make you feel better when you're walking. Like, they're going to put them in nice, cleaned them real good. He hit them with this stuff. He goes, pick them up tomorrow. I picked them up. They almost look brand new. <laughs> now I got to go to Golf Galaxy or a PGA Superstore, and I got to get more, um, Balls? Spikes. Oh, spikes. Put fresh spikes in. I might not even need new shoes. Yeah. I'm so happy. I got my bows back. My my foot joy bows are the best. How much does he bang shoes. you for? What's that? How much he bang you for? Like 30 bucks. That's not bad. Plus tips. The, 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 the soles. The soles. The soles. The, the insults uh, alone, you know. 20 bucks. Like 20 bucks. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, sure. I give him like 45, I think. 40 bucks. Yeah, 50. Capped it up. It's better than 250 for a new pair, Absolutely. you know? So I, I'm happy. So I might even be able to get another whole year out of them because there's nothing wrong with them. It was just the smell. Right. It was like that, you know, you, it's like water. You get, you know, people get water in the basement. You just get something water like just that mildewy, watery to smell. It was just, it was gross. Yeah, it smelled like a basement. Right. You smell like a basement that gets water, right. So, uh, so anyway, so they're oh, clean. Wonderful, so that's wonderful, wonderful. What's that? CMC is going to miss multiple weeks. Wait, just wait, what? Christian McCaffrey, running back for the Panthers, is going to miss multiple weeks. Uh, did you just uh, did you just break news on the podcast? I did. I had to because that's just this is going to be old news he's by breaking, Thursday. He's breaking. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, they're not going to they're going to see this on Thursday. But what are we? Why are we breaking fantasy football news on the podcast? <laughs> he goes, "Oh no, I'm thinking of you going. Oh, what happened? What happened? What happened?" Three. Christian McCaffrey. Who cares? You needed to know that. You don't even have him on your team. What? How much? You got him on your team? Yes. How many teams you got him on? Two. <laughs> those two teams, you just lost all your money on those two teams. Um, how about a friend of mine in my keeper league, by the way, though? He has Why are we a, talking about your keeper league? Well, because you got me out <laughs> talking about it. He beat me in week one because he had Chris McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley. They're how? both how? out. Oh, keeper league. It's a, it's, a, it's a dynasty league. He had the first pick in the year in the draft uh, when Saquon Barkley came out. And then two years before that, he had the fourth pick in the draft. The first pick was Joe. Uh, the first pick was. Um, the first pick was Leonard Fournette. The second pick was Dalvin Cook. The third pick, no, the second pick was J Joe Mixon. The third pick was Dalvin Cook. And the fourth pick was Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. So this guy had the fourth pick and got McCaffrey and had the first pick and got yep. Saquon. Saquon. So now for the next six years, he's got the two best running backs in the <laughs> It's crazy, but anyway, there's nothing in that cup. Uh, no, I know. I was, I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping they're both empty. They're both empty. Um, and why did Duncan drop the donuts? So stupid. So stupid. What do you mean drop donuts? It's there's no more donuts at Dunkin' Donuts. It's not Dunkin' Donuts anymore. It's just Duncan. Oh, like what? Just Duncan, not D and D. No, that, that's what I'm saying. They branded <laughs> the whole D and D, right? But now it's just Duncan. Yeah. Because we do more than just donuts. Well, no, America we do runs coffee. on Duncan. We do, we do. Well, that was the slogan that they came out with when they got rid of the donut. America runs on Duncan. No, that's Starbucks. You're, D and you're D. Talking, you're talking about Starbucks. The way you're talking right now, you're Starbucks. Excuse me. The way you're talking about right now is your Starbucks. Duncan don't talk like that. Duncan don't talk like what? 
like how you're talking. The whole, oh, we America. Oh no, <laughs> America runs on Duncan. No, that's Starbucks. And it's uh, yes, no. Starbucks has the pinky out. Yeah. Pinky's out with the Starbucks. Upper they're, Montclair. They're upper Montclair. They're <laughs> foo foo. They're fuji fuji. Right, but. I mean, it's eight dollars for a cup of coal, <laughs> for a cup of coffee. Like, stop it. The cold brew because we put the word nitro in it. Get the fuck out of here. But no, Dunkin' was Dunkin' Donuts. It's Dunkin' the go go Dunkin' Donuts. What do you want? A donut. D and D. All right, good. Yeah, go Dunkin' Donuts. A glaze stick. I don't care if you're offering sandwiches and 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 hash browns and who gives a shit? It's Dunkin' Donuts. They took away the donut. It's just dunking now. It's terrible. It's awful. Because you, you dunk the donuts in the coffee. Dunkin' Donuts. That's kind of what it... I guess the guy's name is Dunkin'. I don't know. Yeah, it must have been. It's terrible. It's a terrible name. Anyway, piss me off. But no, shoes. Happy about my shoes. Shoes are very important, man. They got to fit right. They got to fit right. They got to be comfortable. From the ground up. You got to be tight. They got to be tight. You got to have that support. Got to have good contact with the ground. And people, if you haven't bought the boas yet, you need to go do it. You need to try a pair of boas. Click, 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 click. It's just nothing better when you need to hit that drive and you just click, click, click. Couple clicks. Trust me. Just a couple. Real quick, before we get out of here, thanks to social media, we have an opportunity to create a brand with a following. What sets O'Brien Creative Group apart from other branding experts is our creative first approach to harnessing the potential of your company and translating it to the masses. Whether you're seeking out a professional branding identity or a simple logo design, you can count on the creative minds at OCG to accurately and artfully interpret your company's true identity throughout any medium. Visit O'BrienCreativeGroup.com to learn more about how we can help and be of service to you. O'BrienCreativeGroup.com. He pulls out some concepts that are pretty cool. Like everything that's kind of like going on, you know, whatever's going on in the world of sports or the world of, uh, you know, just entertainment or whatever. He pulls out some cool stuff. He just he posts up like concept ideas and, and, and logos and stuff. It's pretty cool. So check him out at BrianCreativeGroup.com. Follow him on social media too. Um, cold temperatures in the east. It's getting to that fall winter sport stuff. Again, love the polos, love the over, lo- love the, uh, the over oh, outerwear. I'm a big fan of the outerwear. Bryce at DeChambeau, minus six. I won up $200 with the bet because I won three. We doing doing another bet this week at the Corals Punta Cana Resort and Club Championship. (laughs) The what? The Corals Punta Cana Resort Club. Punta Cana? Yeah. (laughs) Is that Mexico? (laughs) Oh, my God. Dominican Republic? Oh, what the fuck? (laughs) You said that like like, like, like you were so disappointed that I didn't know that. You know, you you haven't vacationed in Punta Cana? Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> That's how you say it. Oh, is that how you say it? Yeah. No, I, I don't. I don't think I've ever been to Put- Putacana. That's in the DR. Never been to DR. Never no. vacation. Never summered in DR. No, you say it like it's a thing. Like I just think people know Putacana, Dominican. I'm Republic. sure they do. I know. All right, I screwed up. What do you want from me? I don't know. I, don't, I thought it was Mexico. I, I'm thinking. Um, oh, what was I thinking? Of? When you said it, I was thinking. I was not obviously not thinking Dominican Republic. I was thinking of uh, where my buddy is out in in Mexico. Cancun. No. The other side. The Cabo. Cabo? Yeah. I was thinking Cabo. Why were you thinking Cabo? I don't know, because you said Punta Cana. I don't know. (laughs) Whatever. What's going on there in the Dominican Republic? There's a tournament? Yes. That's that's where we're at this week. Who's playing? Everybody or who? Who's playing? No. No, not everybody. Why don't you pull up the field on your your Remarkable? I can't pull up the field of my remarkable. My remarkable is a notebook. Your phone. Just Think look up. As just a, look a up notebook. phone. Just look up. Little f- you have a computer with a huge monitor screen right in front of you. You want me to flip this? Flip what? Just tell me who's playing in it. Uh, nobody. Actually, nobody. You know. I know everybody. I know most people. What do you team. mean nobody? I know. You know Martin Trainer? Yes. Yeah. Big fan of his. He okay. was. He was thirteen over yesterday. Uh, Patrick Rogers, hundred percent. I played golf with him two years ago. <laughs> okay, okay. D A points. You made that name up. Keep going. Really? Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Matthew Neesmith. Nee- Neesmith. You said it wrong. Neesmith. Okay, Jamie Lovemark. Lovemark. <laughs> That's my guy. He uses <laughs> Rosemark grips. The only person you know. What? Chris, Chris Kirk, not Christian Kirk. Chris Kirk. The wide receiver for the Arizona. <laughs> <Cardinals>. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait no, why would we bet on this? If why it, not? I, I thought this was a weekly thing. Now it's not. It was a major thing. We did it for the major. 
Oh. And we did it in light of, in lieu of, uh, oh, my God, it's the first week of fantasy football. So in honor so, of that. I thought you wanted to do every week. We can make it a weekly segment. What? I, I mean, I can bet you something, anything, but I, 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 I don't want to bet right, on here that. We go. Here we go. Uh, I don't know anybody in that. I don't even know where Putacana is. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know that your drink's empty by now. The ice has melted a little bit by now. All right, I gotta get going. What time we got? How long are we? Fifty minutes. How? I'm sorry, folks. Folks, we just gave you fifty minutes of gibberish. I think. Nothing. I mean, I mean, look, we recapped the U.S. Open. We talked about Bryson. We talked about our bat. We talked about Re- oh, Reed. Well, another. We talked about Reed breakdown. The Wolf breakdown. Bryson DeChambeau, congratulations on winning the U.S. Open for 2020. The only, th- the third player in history to win the U.S. Amateur, the NCAA individual, and the U.S. Open is Tiger Jack and Bryson DeChambeau. Talked about how shitty my shoes are and how important it is to be fitted for shoes and how I was super happy to get the uh, the Foot Joy shoes back. I'm actually going to start working out like the crazy The cold temperatures, now. you're going to start working out like crazy? Yeah. Like Bryson. I might do, too. I might, too. I might, <laughs> I might, I might try to drop. Like, I'm actually going right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna start running today. I'm gonna just take my shirt off and start running through the, in the winter. Day one today. Day one. Going Day to, one today. Going to get crazy at the gym. I told my wife I was like, babe, I was like, let, let me ask you something. <laughs> I said if I if I were to leave this house every morning at seven o'clock to go to the gym, and be back here by eight thirty to take John to school, you getting everything ready? Like you getting him up? You getting him dressed? You giving him breakfast? And you dealing <laughs> with our daughter as well and the pro the one year old and during this process. She goes, if you're going to go to the gym I'll do anything. every day at 7 <laughs> o'clock in the morning, she says, I will do everything. I go, and not complain about it. She goes, yes. She goes, because I know you're not going to do it. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. It's not what I say. Yeah. I said, if I get up at 7 in the morning to go to the gym, you got everything. Bro, if I did this for like just two weeks, she would lose her a mind. A week. She would lose her mind. <laughs> she would lose her mind. Let's test it. You want to test it? Yeah. Maybe I just wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning and just leave. Leave. And just go play golf. Golf. Nine <laughs> <holes. laughs> nine, you <laughs> can get nine holes done in an hour. <laughs> I could go. I could just go to the range for an hour and a half. Maybe that's the move. What? Then you're not going to be losing any weight. But we're just going to test the one week. We're just going to test the one week. Isn't it? Nobody sees any gains in one week. Well, if you're running for a week straight, you don't think... Yeah, but th- that's the other thing is that you're not going to see weight change. You're going to see my body shape changing because I'm going to be turning the excess fat into muscle. I don't right, plan right. on... Like, I'm not cutting the diet. Yeah, your I'm shape's not gonna change. running cardio and trying to lose... Like, that doesn't work for me. Yeah, for like, me. I know my I'm body my type. Diet. I know what I need to do. I need to eliminate... Uh, I need to drastically eliminate carbs, Right. While not eating a ridiculous amount of red meat, like I gotta like limit the red meat, limit the carbs, and eat everything else. I'm ex- I'm I'm opposite. I have cardio to- for me has got to be like a ten minute warm up at the beginning and maybe a ten minute at the end. But me, in order for me to do any change to me, yeah. I need to just be lifting weights, whether it be lightweight or whatever it is. It just needs to be like that. That needs to happen for right. me to maintain it. Yeah. If I'm not on a weightlifting schedule, if I'm not feeling, I got to just do it. I'm doing it today. The problem I'm is that the gym just opened up. So I'm it's going. like the last six months, eight months, I haven't been able to do anything. Yeah. I mean, what am I going to do? Run? Right. In my high? I can't run. I can barely walk. I mean, come on, what are we talking about? But anyway, no. So she said that she would do that. You don't. I think it's bullshit. I don't think it's. I don't think it's possible. I don't think that. I think after a week she would lose her mind. Taking care of both kids in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think. I don't think she would. But she today. wants. She says that I want. Yeah. Go ahead. No. She. I would do it. I. I, I want you to do it. Which go. is. Which is great because she knows that you know. You know, in a I couple years, it. why don't you guys just join a gym where there's like babysitting and all that stuff? I have a gym. We both. Well, actually, her gym actually got shut. Like what shut gym? down. What gym? Platinum, I think it's just gone. Okay, which is a shame. My dad goes know? to that gym. Yeah, my dad did go to that gym. Um, but the one I go to is is open again. Um, Lifetime. Spa twenty three. <laughs> Spa twenty three on twenty three. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's legit. I go to a legit gym too. It's like pools, racquetball. No, me, mine too. Sauna, steam rooms. You know, shower, what li- you like, know, li- like clean. Do you know what life- clean? Do you, nice. Do you know what Lifetime is? Yeah, I know Lifetime. That's where I go. Where is there a lifetime by you? Berkeley Heights, 20 minutes from my house. Ugh. It's about 115 a month, right? We won't disclose how much it is. But <laughs> it's about 115 a month. Lifetime is great. I was a member of the Lifetime in Florin Park. Flo- there's one in Florin Park, too. Mm-hmm. Now there's one in That's Bridgewater. That's what I, when I, when I lived at, uh, when I moved back from California before we bought our house, and I was staying at my parents' house uh, for about three months while we were finalizing our house, 
Um, I worked at it Lifetime. Big fan of Lifetime. Oh, huge fan. Yeah, Spectrum Gyms are the ones out in California that I love. I like going to a place that I can spend two and a half hours. You know what I hate? I, I like doing... Fitness. I don't yeah. like going... I like playing racquetball. I like swimming. I like going and to a lot the of sauna, the giants. The I like doing shit. A lot of the Jets and Giants went to the Lifetime mm-hmm. in Florham Park. Yeah. Yeah. Not the Giants, more so the Jets, because their they're facilities right there. Right. So they all kind of live in... That area. But um, all right, we're way off topic and we're way over time. Folks, I got nothing else for you. Nothing. Post some comments below. Make me laugh. We're going to send out the Rosemark Grip. We're also going to send out an, uh, an AccuHit. Mm-hmm. Uh, swing Trainer. Uh, really good. I got to hit it a little bit. We're going to do, do a little deeper review on it soon coming up. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking with a uh, groundskeeper to give um, if you have any questions for us, any anything you want to learn about the golf course, shoot us in uh, either a, a, a direct a DM on Instagram to uh, Jeremy, the producer, or uh, comment below and just let us know uh, if there's any. Um, just get in touch with us if you have any questions that you're curious about. How does this happen on a golf course? How does the crew get this to happen? What's the process for this? We're talking. We'll be talking about the air rating. We'll be talking about the bunkers. We'll be talking about punching the holes for the greens. Maybe give some tips on on how to. And it still drives me crazy, buddy. I hate when I see somebody replacing a ball marked the wrong way. Yeah, it drives me crazy. So what we'll do? Maybe we'll get a. Uh, speaking we'll get of the a, devil. Um, speaking of the devil. Who? My wife. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get like a piece. I might bring in a piece of grass okay. just so this guy can show <laughs> us. Because I know you, 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 you go in, or you have a hole, you go in and you push, you push, you push. You don't go under. You don't pick up the bottom no, and kill the no. root. That's why there's holes, not holes, but the brown spots on yeah. the green because you're, you're killing the root. Anyway, folks, we'll bring you more about that. We'll see what's going on, everybody. Have a great week. And uh, do us a favor, as always, keep it inside the leather!